tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say, we are deeply sorry. Nope. Found TV stand on the side of the road, it's really cool, but I think it was owned by a smoker is the only downfall. But watching you in style now on TV, nice. There are balls inside, you can pick them up if I had a bag. I don't have a bag! This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. Open the padlock and oil the crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Nice. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Shut up, Inland Empire. Maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. Of course you should. There's this is your time to shine, Hobocop. Dive into that dumpster for huh. extra content. Ooh. Time to shine, Hobocop. Dive into the dumpster for extra content. What's this? Just a feeling. A warning from some part of you. Yeah, but the thievey part of me says to steal stuff. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. <laughs> We're just in time. Just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Look under the boxes of cartons, pick at the rags, search the food waste. Dig in hobo cop style for extra content. Wow, an armistice caliber 50 knock cannon. Half wrapped in paper tissues. So shiny. What's a knock cannon? It's a giant rifle, and it's very expensive. Not as expensive as that fat string of pearls snaking around the rotten banana peels, however. And is that Cordon Electric's preamp with Electra F2 tubes? <laughs> it is. That catches quite a price. We're talking 12,000. Easy. Unless you're into hi-fi yourself. I am into hi-fi. That's too bad, because none of those things are actually in there. <laughs> Darn. There's just food waste <laughs> and crisp wrappings. <laughs> My brain's playing with me. A cruel jest. There must be something. All you see is a broken mug with a racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Take the mug. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant briefly glances at the mug, then returns the sight to the trash. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Mr. Kim. You see, milk and egg rest with one broken <laughs> egg in it. Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. Ooh. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Turbo Nothing noodles! Good, however. Ah, oh, pick out the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Wait. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. I found his pants? The victim's clothes? Yep. Cadaver in odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. This is a black plastic bag marked evidence. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pocket. Empty. Or empty. He wore them with a belt. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but he looks at the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste. Yeah. Dripping with pus. Bag that this shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the Doing all sorts of good. Shirt that's one of a light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. <laughs> Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. Just garbage. That's all I all think. Right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that, that one. one. Nods I towards that crackhead. Confronting that force. Yeah, when you ask about the kids. <laughs> The fuck's he on about? Is that Kuno? He thinks you're an infant. Is that Kuno? See? All right. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Well, that's damaged, a... but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. I found Office. a ledger. Is that your paperwork? I don't know what this <laughs> is. Look, 
The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. Ah, sweet. We even got an autopsy form in there. Miserable looking slip of paper. I found you my notebook. My asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? Must have been cramping my style. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I need to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. I don't want to be a cop. Oh, I think I won't be a cop anymore. So I tried to flush my cop life down the toilet. Well. He doesn't know what to say. Lucky we found it. You should take stock of what remains. Just to be sure, some has not made it into the hands of the RCM's adversaries. Organized crime and the like. There might have been police secrets in your notes. Oh no, man. Sounds like an order. I don't take those. I see. <laughs> yes. You are what we call a badass, aren't you? Makes little quotation marks at the word indicating well, he's unsure. Went off script there. Getting your ass handed to you. You shouldn't go picking fights if your rhetorical faculties haven't suggested it. Tell me. Does your badass see more in there, or are we done here? Thanks, let's talk about yes. something else. It's about yes. that money I owe. Have you got it? How much do I owe you again? A lot, <laughs> lot. For the room, drinks, and broken window, 130 real. Alright, let's talk about something else. Goodbye. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. Mm. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. It's, it, it, it's really tempting though, logic brain. Fine. Hello, sir. Got time to answer a few questions? Cut down and replies something. His left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got any impressive he spots here. And bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. I don't think I need anything. Stay masculine. Oh, I got a thought. Aroma spices, alcohol. And tomatoes hang in the air. Kiak, remember? No, your fingers do. I am drawn to its cobalt blue. There was a winch outside on the roof, like that of a small elevator. Mm. Well, if there was a winch, I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. No, the door is a mega investigation. <laughs> <laughs> the door in the main investigation will merge into stereo investigation. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. The door does not budge. The cobalt blue surface Ugh. feels rough to touch. The old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals a faint sticker on the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk number 8102 with a slogan Mankind Be Vigilant. Good mail delivery box. Pat Pat. Yay, Pat Pat the box. <laughs> the box seems happy. The box seems happy. Each shit pig, fucked by the coon, and sent G with the crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore, and best set mailbox also. Been there, mailbox collection box, been there. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankfully even. So do you. You <laughs> shudder, then you swallow. Here he comes. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. I am the law. Oh, hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? She stomps her feet to feel warmer. What kind of store is this anyways? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and... I love how you're a hobo cop. Yeah. Crime, romance, Help me dig through the trash better. These are famous people. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and board games. Yeah. What is a book? What is a postcard? What, what? What's a what's a board game? 
Don't be ridiculous. I know all these things. Don't you sass. I said I know all these things I do, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You've been standing here silently. <laughs> It's okay if I ask some questions. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. Who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold red cheeks. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. But it does make the famous people more famous. She smiles gleefully. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Fame is for vain people. I have better things to do. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. Annette's expression remains ever so well. <laughs> But she doesn't say anything. Yeah, you heard me. Only losers waste their time with that garbage. That kind of a childish thing for a grown-up to say? <laughs> when she grows up, and if she grows up to be clever, she'll discover there's no such thing as a Grown up. What makes you think I'm grown up? You look all wrinkly and hairy, like an old person. Yeah, I'm old. That's just what happens to people. I'll be when I get old. Maybe I'll also get all wrinkly. <laughs> oh. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that, and the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. <laughs> Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Uh. Uh. It's that bad. Points to your head. <laughs> I'm just slowly turning into Cliff Steele the more I play this. Crime is what we were solving before this conversation began. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. <laughs> and it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is. Or how the good guys are gonna catch him. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. <laughs> what the fuck's crime? Oh, by the way, I'm a cop. You don't look much like a policeman. <laughs> huh? Well, what does a cop look like then? Offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to the book cover, which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stares grimly over the body of a dead woman. Wow, look at that guy! I'll never be as good as Mullen! Don't say that! He's not even real! You're real! That's right, a real failure! Overshadowed by a fake man, that's harsh. That's right, a real failure! Sir, you to a fictional character. I'm just gonna keep, have people keep giving me morale boosts. Maybe you can show me some real deductive police work, sir. Like in the books. Alright, I'm going to deduce something new. You fail to deduce. <laughs> she waits intently. I'm a detective. I deduce that you are very small. Come on, don't be silly. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business Mom going? Says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Ass up? <laughs> I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. Sounds serious. I should probably... deduct this. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Stroke your chin. Enough about this curse for now. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not. Manifest itself. <laughs> it does not exist. I liked it better when we were asking about Dick Mullen. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Mm hmm. Enough about this curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Let me try to deduce something again. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? You don't need to be worried. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. Just shine this flashlight around. Show me your hands! The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. 
You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded. She just suspicious, suspicious glance. Super de simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Want more? I bet I can figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. You think so? Fine, do better. Do do something about me. You're quite sober. She snaps back quickly. The lieutenant does not flinch. <laughs> comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He <laughs> is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. I love this child. And I'm having a grand... I am also sad and my head hurts. I'm sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. She looks at the ugly of sympathy. There she stands. Swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze, she smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. Somehow, there's something you're missing. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Heimdall. Heimdall. Somewhere. Storekeep, tell me about the Muscle Man books! Oh, Man from Kjelmdal. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they popular? Black violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds good. Which, which one should I start with? What does it matter? They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Kjelm Dalaman, the man from Kjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. I don't- I have a dollar. I have a dollar. <laughs> Look through display of books. Rows and rows of Kjelm Dalaman blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Kjelmdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Kjelmdal. Return, Return to, to Kjelmdal. And the Solipsistic. Man and from, from Heimdall and, and the Heimdall man. man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Heimdall and the sages at the end of the world. <laughs> Let's just read off titles from the man from Heimdall. God. Man from Heimdall and the scorched earth. Man from Heimdall, the Heimdall colonies. Man from Heimdall and the swamp beast. Man from Heimdall. And the snow crabs. Is that all? Not even close. <laughs> Man from here on hell. Man from here on and the forest of slaves. Man Three paragraphs of just titles the of these books. Yeah. Man from here on dal. Here on dal burning. There's even the trial of death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of here on man, and so much more. Do any of these books call out to me? A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Ah, oh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hjelmdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Between the throne and the Hjelmdal man lies a bonfire, casting <laughs> shadows on the wall. The shadow of the Ah, sweet, I can practice my feminism. Like the, devil horns. the title reads, Man from Hjelmdal and the Devil Woman. Storekeep, this book is misogynistic. How could you... <laughs> the entire series is also endearingly racist, if I may add. Thank you, Kim. Oh, sirs, I...